So I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but while we've been spending a lot of time focusing on new EVs, a new Tacoma, even driving a heavily updated Cayenne, a staple in the car guy diet has gone through some changes. So knowing that, perhaps we should spend some time with a revised old friend. Now, I hate to start out these episodes as Captain Obvious, but if you couldn't tell, this is a BMW 3 Series. It is currently on offer in three different flavors. A 330i, which is a four-cylinder gas engine. A 330e, which this car is, also a four-cylinder gas engine, but that one is a plug-in hybrid. And then there is the magnificent M340i, which is the inline six, 382 horsepower B58, but that is not the car we are focusing on today. Uh, then you were looking at this and saying, wow, that really doesn't look a whole hell of a lot different than the 3 Series was last year. So what's changed? And that would be a very good question because what you are looking at is a mid-cycle refresh, a very mild one at that. As a basis of comparison, you and I a couple of weeks ago drove the 2024 Porsche Cayenne. That one was also a mid-cycle refresh, but they made significant changes where the vehicle looks entirely different. This, there are some changes up front, and there are some changes in the rear. They make some changes to the way the option packages are configured. And then there is another change that I would argue is probably more noticeable. Now here you're probably having a bit of deja vu because you look at this and you're like, wait a minute, I've seen that in the i4, the iX, as well as the BMW XM. So here they decided to bring the older model in line with the design theme of the current models. And here everything works well, but the thing I want to point out that is incredibly important, we drove the X1, the updated X1, that's an all new vehicle. And that too has this curved glass screen, but there they made a change to the iDrive system where they removed the unified controller. Now, we used to beat this up, what, 20 years ago and say, this was awful, it's the worst thing, please throw it out. And they worked on it for 20 years. Now it is the reference standard. Perhaps Volkswagen should learn from this concept as well. But really the only thing that's changed to that I'd say is a negative in terms of the UX. The shifter, it's this small little toggle switch. I love toggle switches, but not for shifters. Putting that aside and perhaps being a bit more pedantic, they've taken away the vent controls here. They're all contained within the screen. You and I have discussed this with this screen and other BMWs. That is something that I would argue needs to be addressed because it's about safety, not about making it fancy. I want to keep my eyes on the road, not trying to find the fan controller in the screen. And before you say it, voice isn't there yet. Then on the positive side, uh, the build quality on the inside, meaning the tactile feel, it's always been relatively good in BMWs, but something here, and this car is not fitted with a lot of interior dress-up options. The only thing it has is this mesh that's part of an M Dynamic package, but the top of the dash, top of the door panels, and that door panel that has like the red that picks up on the seats, that's all vinyl. And it's actually a high quality tactile feel, which I'm surprised it's this good in kind of a basic BMW 3 Series. Now you guys know the drill by now, and this being a 3 Series even more pertinent, that we understand some key figures before we get behind the wheel. This being a plug-in hybrid, what about efficiency? They're the MPG, meaning just the gas engine. It's an average, according to the US government, of 27. But the MPGE, meaning with the plug-in, 73. Then this is a three series, and yeah, it's still the plug-in, and it's still a four cylinder, but what's the zero to 60? Well, it's not mid threes like other BMWs, but ironically, it's the same as the 330i, even with all of the extra bits of the plug-in hybrid system at 5.6 seconds to 60. Okay, so I will go down on record as officially saying, I'm surprised by the weight here. 4,083 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 1,852 kilograms. Now, two important points of order. This one is rear drive. If it were all wheel drive, it would be 97 more pounds. But much more importantly, if this were just a 330i, none of the electrification, it would be 547 pounds lighter. 
with that. Not sport mode, extra boost mode. Oh, yeah, there's really no delay there. That I wasn't expecting. Wow, that's actually really good. So I know you and I are late to the party here and driving the 330E, but this, you know, the electrification party is interesting. Uh, you know that I am one of the folks that questions the logistics and the timing of everything. We've discussed this in many other episodes and podcasts with guests. However, this is an instance where electrification, I feel, is incredibly welcome. Because this engine, we've experienced it in many other BMWs before, it's good. It provides sprightly power. It's quick. Here, it's really, if you would put a spectrum in terms of delivery of power between a 330 and that stunning M340 we drove on the track many years ago, this is not in the middle. This is closer to the M340. It just doesn't have that silky smooth power delivery of the six cylinder simply by virtue of the fact of it being a four cylinder and it's gonna be a bit more buzzy. Aside from that, there is unusually good power delivery here. It works incredibly well with the eight-speed torque converter automatic. Again, BMW, they're probably one of the best in terms of using a torque converter with their automatic transmissions. So that's all fine and good, and you think it's puppy dogs and roses. But imagine if it was about two, maybe 300 pounds less. That would be even more interesting. So yes, you and I have discussed some aesthetic changes of this mid-cycle refresh of the 3 Series. But underneath, a lot of it is still very much the same car. So if you're going to graft on a plug-in hybrid system, where are you going to put all the bits, especially like the batteries? You could put it underneath the back seat, but I believe there's something else there. So the idea is you could put it over the rear suspension. And here the BMW packaging engineers bring about an unusual solution. The load floor is adjustable, kind of like a Sequoia, where you could change the height of it, but there they use it to match where the seat folds, and a lot of you really don't like that. This one, it can pivot where the load floor is, so it can allow for more space down here behind the battery, or if one needs a flat load floor, you can change it, and it's flat all the way through. There's something interesting going on here, aside from all the usual bits, the setup of a 3 Series. This is exactly the opposite of a standard ICE 3 Series in terms of weight distribution. So you look at like a 330i, it's 52 up front, 48 back. That's good, right? Well, this flips that. It's 48 in the front and 52 in the back. And I gotta tell you, I think this car's a little bit more tail happy. Uh, yeah, a big function of the battery and all that kind of stuff with the electrification that you would notice in the back when you open the trunk. But here, I feel like I can steer this one a bit more with my right foot. Then there's an interesting setup in this year change of BMW. One can get the M Sport suspension, or as a standalone option, they can do the adjustable suspension in the 330E. So it all depends on how aggressive of a suspension setup you want in this, a plug-in hybrid. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the options game with today's contestant, a revised BMW 3 Series. This one, a plug-in hybrid, the BMW 330E for a base price of $43,300. Now, what you are looking at is a color that should be familiar because we've driven a couple of M cars in that Brooklyn gray metallic. I have to say it works incredibly well, especially with the Takora red vinyl interior. Uh, you don't pay extra for the red interior, but you do pay an extra $650 for that paint. Uh, then the driver's assistance package, which is all the ADAS stuff, uh, $700. Then, very important, the dynamic handling package. That is the M Sport brakes. Notice the blue calipers, huge thing that you need on a car like this. Then the variable sport steering, $1,400. Then the driver's assistance package pro. That is the level two autonomy. No, this is not a self-driving car, $1,700. Interesting to point out, that package is available in every BMW, whether it's $43,000 
or $160,000 in an XM, and it is the same price at the 1700. And we press on to the M Sport package, that is the 19-inch wheels, the M Sport steering wheel, and the anthracite headliner, which is a nice touch, and that mesh we talked about on the dash at the beginning of the episode, uh, that is $2,550. Then the premium package, this really shouldn't be optional on a BMW. The heated steering wheel, the comfort access key, basically the keyless entry, the lumbar support on the driver's side. That also brings about something incredibly important, at least to me living in California, heated front seats, and the total package is $1,350. Then believe it or not, they give us $80 back because they've taken away the digital key. My guess, that has something to do with a chip shortage. I'm thinking we're kind of at the tail end of that on BMWs. Then there's the HK Sound, the Harman Kardon sound system, which is kind of a bargain here because it kicks $875. Then the only other thing we pay extra for is the destination handling. No, not von Deutschland, not von South Carolina. These are now made, that's one of the changes when they do the mid-cycle refresh. These are now made in Mexico. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this, San Luis Potosi, also where they make the two series and the M2 we just drove. $995, that brings us to a total retail price of $53,445. Uh, in all the driving that you and I have done, I had zero range when I got on to Moto Canyon here, and we have charged six miles. But what's important is what we do with that six miles. And here is what makes the 330E more interesting. I have been able to drive this in full EV mode to and from the hangar, basically my office, for a couple of days now. The only time I had to use the gas was at the gym, the charger that was there was being used by, of course, a Tesla. Now this is really not gonna come as a shock to you, but the US EPA calls the EV range on this for 22 miles. Okay, so what have you and I learned today? Well, if I may be direct, you would have to have your head examined if one would choose a 330i over this, the 330e. It is the best argument for electrification when executed properly in the right package is indeed a very good thing. I'd go so far as to saying, from a driving dynamics perspective, this exceeds the C-Class that is electrified in a bit of a different way, but still electrified. And while we're on that topic, you know we talked about this being 27 mpg in the gas only mode well most of the driving we did today out here in moto canyon that was not only gas only mode it was that extra boost mode and i still got 22 mpg to be pedantic 22.3 mpg so less than the 27 that stated but the kind of driving we do that is very impressive which brings us to the wish list. And here, of course, I'm gonna ask for more range, but the reality is there probably isn't enough price elasticity in this car at this price point. Perhaps let's try it out on X7s and that kind of stuff, which leads me to really what I'm asking for here. How about this whole mousetrap, the plug-in hybrid mousetrap with the B58? How about that and not making it very expensive? And <laughs> if I'm asking for a lot here, 500 pounds less than this. But you know what? I am just one man at this point in the episode that I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV Onward, Moto Man TV Onward, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing them with all your friends on your socials and doing all the YouTube things. Subscribe, notifications, and the like button. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.